All right. Um, yeah. So people actually watch this one. So let's let's get into this. Our top five is all the most popular one. Yeah, it's it's it's. I don't know. It's almost clickbait. I think. No. I think yeah. yeah people just really like top five, top ten, that kind of thing. They do. It's it's a lot of content. It's yeah. It, I, I think I think people power. like to hate hate watch them a lot. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. I'm horrible. I've 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 been sucked into the system, but. So on on this Hydro Man ran top five, we are going to see, we're going to talk about the top five movies we would like to see remade. These can be movies that we either feel deserve to be remade in some fashion, or they can be movies that maybe we thought had some promise and didn't really quite live up to it, and maybe they need to be remade and and with a different spin or with a with a different premise. How do we do this? Do I start? No, you start, because it was my movie. I think that's how we go. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Um, but do you have any? Uh, do you have any uh, honorable uh, mentions you want to do first? No, no, I don't actually. Uh, I'll be honest. This was kind of, even though this is my idea, I kind of had a difficult time coming up with this list. Really thinking of movies that I thought that I thought deserved or, or needed a remake. I, I'm not a big. F- fan of remakes uh, a lot of times but then also at the same time a lot of my favorite movies are remakes so the the thing the fly um evil dead 2 is actually kind of a remake of evil dead 1 in a weird way so i I like them and i hate them at the same time but do you have any honorable mentions i had a couple um they're a tad bit tongue-in-cheek okay the first one is psycho and that's Mostly because I need to do everything I can to make sure that the 1999 remake doesn't exist. I think we need to do a second shot for shot remake, but we just need to change out all the genders. That's what we need to do. I would watch that. I would absolutely watch that. If you could find a woman the size of Vince Vaughn, I would absolutely watch that. Yeah. And the mother can be played by Anne Haitia's corpse since she was in the remake. (laughs) Okay. Too soon. Sorry. Okay. I don't have to start too soon. Um, the other one is The Terminator, um, with the condition being I want it to be a real modern remake. So instead of trying to kill her, they're just going to cyber bully her and then try to get her camp on Twitter. That's, that's, that's what I want for Sarah Connor. Okay. See her, see her, see her trending, like cancel Sarah Connor all over the head. <laughs> Uh, but uh, those, those are the only ones I have. Okay, <laughs> I like that. Though, like the Skynet, Skynet generates fake videos of Sarah Connor and gets her canceled, like saying like, really like, racist things and 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 really homophobic super things. Super advanced, <laughs> super advanced AI. <laughs> and then, like, she can just do like do something like super woke and get canceled from like every side. Yeah. Right, it's gonna backfire. Yeah. Like, oh my god, this was their plan all along. You know, I will say with you, I do. Uh, you know, I don't entirely disagree with that idea. I, I didn't even think about it. I'll say, I'll take that as an honorable mention. Um, I think the two, Terminator, well, the, the Terminator does need a remake because I think I think the entire series has gotten muddled and if they want to make another one i think they do i think they actually might need to do a remake of of some sort not a reboot but an actual remake don't have arnold in it don't have sarah or don't have um linda hamilton do a complete well they complete there's remake. no way there's no way they don't have arnold do some kind of cameo like they just there's no way they won't do that I think the best cameo would be like have like Michael Bean in it at some point in time or something like that. Something, something small, something most right. people wouldn't recognize. Yeah, I, I, I think a, I think an Arnold cameo could overshadow the entire movie. That would be that would be my concern. But it could. But I feel like I almost feel like if they didn't do it, that would overshadow it even more. <laughs> that's that's true. Like everyone is like that. Like when, when you say Terminator, you say Arnold. 
My number five is a uh, Boondock Saints. Okay. This is actually a movie that I really like. I despise the sequel. It shouldn't. It shouldn't exist. If you haven't okay. seen it, you're not missing anything. I didn't know um, you were a uh, frat boy from the late '90s. That's interesting. Yeah. So, yes, okay. I had a, right. I had a good series. My uh, my uh, mom doesn't really like to talk about it, but I did have a I did have a uh, frat boy period when I was in <laughs> elementary school. So uh, I'm going to say this. So Boondock Saints to me is in the same category as for a long time, like Dave Matthews band was for me, where everybody in college that was like this, like the the frat bro was so into it. It, it, it just annoyed me. And I've actually never watched Boondock Saints. I kind of refuse to watch sure. it because people who were fans of it irritated me so much. I'm just like, no, I'm just not going to watch it. No, I'm not going to give you guys the time of day. I don't care. There's plenty of good movies I've missed out on. This is going to be one now. Just be out of spite. So, I They definitely have some um, obnoxious fans. Um, the first one is a genuinely good movie, though. Um, if you can get past the fans, it actually is a... Like, uh, William Dafoe does a great job in it. Um, Nor- Norman Reedus is great in it. Like, there's some quality acting, some quality scenes, like some real, some real talent. Um, I don't know where it went in the in the sequel. That was correct, but ignoring the, how terrible the fan the fans could be, what I said, um, I think it's absolutely worth watching. Uh, I think you would really enjoy it. It's kind of a poor man's John Wick. Okay. I think is a way of put, way to describe it. Um, I don't know. If you do watch it, let me know. I'm curious what you'll think. Okay. Um, do you have any I kind don't. of stipulations or, or any actors that you would like to be in a remake or any, any changes you yes. want? Yes. Tom Hardy has to be in it. I think he would be perfect for the role. And there's a small part of me that wants Matt Damon in it. And I okay. can't, I can't put into words why. I just want him to be in it. I really do. As, <laughs> as any particular character is like William Defoe's character because he's getting up there. You no, know, I, I don't know who I want to play William Defoe's character because he did such a great job. Like, I almost want William Defoe just to do it again. <laughs> like, screw it. Don't even, don't even acknowledge it and just do it again. <laughs> um, but I think Tom Hardy and for some reason Matt Damon, I think they'd be the brothers. Um, although you could just do Ben Affleck and I think why not? <laughs> I mean, they've at least got chemistry together. <laughs> um, and I mean, I wouldn't even want the story like overdone, like completely 180. I, w- I would get rid of the part about the father. I think that wasn't really necessary. I won't spoil it for you, but just I would just remove that bit entirely. Just make it about them too. Okay. Um, and kind of maybe maybe give it more depth as far as them fighting the mob. Um, because it was, the way they did it, it was more about the, the, the aftermath. And there wasn't, it was more focused on the violence than the action. If that makes sense. I think that's kind of why I call it a poor man's John Wick. The actual, like, like John Wick, the actual action and the choreography is there. Like, it, it's, 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 it's violent, sure, but you actually see see the action, you see like, you can actually be entertained by the choreography, whereas Boonock Saints is really just violent. Um, good movie still, obviously, but uh, I would love for them to go more in that direction, I think. So, okay. Yeah, I think that's kind of where I'd go with that one. Yeah. All right. If you do watch it, though, I would, I would uh, I want to hear what you think of it. All right. You can, even, you, you can have a giant scowl the whole time, I don't mind. <laughs> So my number five is The Blob. Um, so this was um, originally made in 19, or not, yeah, 1958. Then there was a remake in already in 1988. So it was 30 years after. So we're, we're what, 35 years at this point in time away from the remake. I think it's time for maybe another remake. Um, I think the blob could lend itself to way to to the way um, 
just CGI is gone. I think this is a this is the perfect kind of CGI monster. Um, of course, I'd, I'd want to see practical effects in it because the remake does some amazing practical uh, gore effects. Really, really fun. Um, but but I would just like to see how this movie could be made with with CGI because it was made, you know, in '88. We were we were right, you know. Uh, right ahead of the curve of of having any CGI in movies, there wasn't really any at this time. So, you know, I think it would be it's 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 a, it would be a really interesting going from a black and white to a colorful practical, and then jump ahead and 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 CGI and just kind of look at the look at this this film's history and progression through through American cinema. I I just think it would be interesting. Um, that, that's really all I have for that one. I'd like that. You don't. You don't have any people you'd like to play certain roles or anything. No, because um, because the the blob is obviously the main character. Um, sure. In in um, I will say this: I'm I'm not a big fan of um, what's his name. He was he was one of the guys in Entourage. Oh, I can't remember his name. Dylan. Matt Dillon, I think is his name. I'm not, I'm not really a big fan of him. Um, I think you could find uh, definitely better leads um, than him. Um, I think it was Shawnee Smith was the female lead in 88. And I, I think she did a good job and really was more of like they wrote that character really well. So I'd want another really strong character that was, you know, understood problem solving and, and things like that the way that character did. Um, so... But no real, real actors I can think of. You, you'd probably get a, a couple of cheap actors from, you know, some CW show or some Netflix teen drama. Because I mean, they were they were teens in that movie, so and that that would work. That would be fine. All right. Well, my number four is the uh, Breakfast Club. Okay. So that was made in '85. So we are about a year and a half away from that movie's 40th anniversary. I think it would be plenty of time now for a remake. I honestly wouldn't even want a live changes other than just making it more more modernized. Right. Um, I'm not even. I mean, you could just basically just bring in like modern pop culture and just put it in there. Um, I don't know. Have you ever seen the? Um, there's a fake band Doritos commercial online. I don't know if you've ever seen that. No. I don't want to talk about it on <laughs> because it's actually my kiss and people off. So but I'll, I'll send you the uh, link of that. It's hilarious. Okay. You'll love it. Um, but I, I think for, like, I guess you could really go two ways with it. You could either one have just young actors who, I don't know who they do, play the team. Or you could have people in their 30s pretend that they're 16, 17 years old. Assuming we go that route, I would definitely want Miles Teller. I would definitely want um, what's his name who plays Creed. Um, okay, so you're just wanting the cast from Fan Four Sick? No, just those two. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so far. But um, and then I would definitely, and I would actually want um, Emma Watson to play the uh, the uh, pretty girl. Mo the, Molly the Ringwald. Yeah, she'd be really wrong. Either her or um, Emma Stone. Either way. Okay. And then my, the MSM might make more sense since they've got uh, red hair. Is she an actual red know. hair? I don't know. Is she? Yeah. Yeah, she is. Because that was the big is. thing when she played Gwen Stacy, that, that they, got yeah. a, they, got a, they got a redhead to play a blonde. Yeah. Yeah. All I think of her is just, whenever I think of her as Gwen Stacy, I just think of the web turning into a hand. The web what? When Spider-Man, when uh, Andrew Garfield's shooting his web to, to catch her when she's falling. Oh, her head cracking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but doesn't the web like kind of like kind of turn to a hand? Or am I, am I not remembering that correctly? No, you're remembering that. Yeah, no, I do okay, remember yeah. that. Yeah, that'll be overlaid right here. That was so stupid. <laughs> yeah. But um, I think, I don't know, I, 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 I kind of... That's kind of like a good like background movie. Like it's very simple. There's really there's really almost no plot other than just these kids just pranking up 
cranking up, cranking like a jerk, a uh, jerk principal. Who should be William Defoe? Okay. You just, is and William Defoe Fraser. going to be in all your remakes? He he is now. He is. Okay. And for the and for the sake of continuity of the show, Amber Heard can be the uh, the uh, emo girl. Well, that makes sense. And instead yeah. of an emo girl, can she just be like a was it a cockafagy? Is that is that the, what it's called? I I don't know why you assume I would know that. A, a shit lover? <laughs> can we just make her that? Yeah. Okay. I mean that's that's what the con that's what the uh, hi, the uh, Hydra Man Cannon has, has deemed her. So I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crazy? just imagining that letter that they that they write in. You just see me as a nerd. You just see me as a jock. You just see me as a bed shitter. Yeah, that's all I can think of now. <laughs> uh, so we're going hardcore with the <laughs> anti work with this one. <laughs> that's not anti. I guess. Uh, yeah, we're not. We're not taking the woman side of of that argument. So yeah, I guess so. I mean, well, if look, if, if her and Johnny Depp will agree to be in that, I'll pay whatever the ticket price is. I do not care. I do not care. Yeah, Johnny Depp still still likes to pretend like he's playing fifteen year olds. Sure, yeah. He definitely dresses like he does. Yeah, I, no, I, I will agree with the all jokes aside. I, I do think that that could be an interesting remake. I would be scared that. I don't know. I could, I could see, and, and and this is interesting. I, I know a lot of people get mad because because they remake it because it is a bluff classic. But I think people they're going to sc- do it for all the classics anyway. I mean. Yeah, I, I think I think people would scream that it was that it was woke. And I think if you really look at the original one for its time and place, it's probably woke too for for the people. In that time, it was very progressive film for that time um, to really kind of grapple with what teens are really going through um, sure. and experiencing. I guess, so, I guess today they probably have a kid who's dealing with being trans. They probably have, yeah. Well, I don't know what else. What else would they have? Well, it may not. It may not even be trans, but it would definitely be. You would definitely have a closeted gay kid. Um, yeah. And I mean, I mean, that would be the problem is, is, is that, is that we can, we can guess all these things because they become such common tropes in these kind of things. They aren't even really interesting right. anymore. Um, it would either be, be the jock is, is super toxic male, but he turns out to be a closeted gay guy, or you'd have a super wow. effeminate trans person. And that would, that would be what they would have in there. Uh, yeah. And they, they wouldn't, they wouldn't do something interesting with those, with those types of characters. And that would, that would be my, probably my biggest, biggest problem is do, do something interesting. Um, the, which uh, I actually, the, uh, we'll, we'll talk more about in my number four, actually. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, closet an athlete his dad's like super uptight and like oh i gotta come out to my dad like which, which i'm sure is a real problem but it's like oh absolutely we, yeah we, you know though jokes aside if you and like on a serious note if you give it to the wrong director they would try to work in a school shooting thing into this, and it would just be so horrifically insensitive oh, and awful. That would be... they, they would think that they're being deep about it and they would yeah. What was that? What was that awful show on Netflix? It ran like three seasons. It was like about like this, some girl committed suicide, and the entire show was about the teenagers oh, deal with uh, that. Uh, Thirteen reasons why. Huh? Thirteen reasons why. Yes, that's it. And they would yeah. they did they did something with that. I remember April watching that, and I saw that in like an. They did. I actually watched crap. that one day. Oh. And it. Somehow it's still. I think they had two more seasons after that. Somehow, <laughs> and it was just the most. I just and remember well, watching that, watching that school shooting scene. And I think your your movie sucks. YMS did a um, uh, yes, a, a, a watch yes. along with it with his with his friends, and they just tore it apart. And it was so good, but man, that was bad. Yeah. Well, and all they do is tropes because. By the end of that show, everyone is gay. Everyone <laughs> in that show is gay. Like, like, no one is straight. <laughs> is yeah, and I, I, that that would be my that would be my 
problem with that, which I mean, like the problem is like you could do something really interesting. You could do something, you know, you could have uh, a, a black kid in there and you could talk about how, you know, hey, I have to be better than everybody else because everybody looks at me and, you know, like or, or everybody expects me to be the athlete. And I'm really just this smart guy and every, everybody expects me just to be good at basketball because I'm black or something like, like deal with something that like that like kids actually deal with instead of just dealing with these like modern tropes that, that we've created that, that seems so unrealistic where everybody's gay. Everybody's gay. Everybody's gay. Figure out what the actual problem. No, we're not going to do that. Everybody's gay. Everybody's gay. All right. Well, and speaking of that, so my, my number four is a movie called from last year called they slash them. So it's a movie. It's a it's a slasher flick set at a Christian deconversion camp for for gays and trans kids. And I remember seeing this come out, and I was like, okay, this sounds really interesting. Like this is going to be, you know, it's it's going to probably have a good mess, or have, or I I think have a good message, but it's also going to be, you know, it's not going to treat treat these kids like snowflakes. It's actually going to to be a slasher flick, and by the end of the flick, every single gay and trans kid is alive, and only the people who run the camp have died. But it's not any of the kids who are actually the killers. It's it's so poorly done, and and so, and I think it was like it was like written by the guy that wrote Gladiator. It's written and directed by the guy that wrote Gladiator too, and it was right. just so poorly done, and it handled the kids with. It, it handled these these kids with with kids gloves and their issues with kids gloves it again it treated them like like all these tropes um with, without treating them like like humans or even like like characters in a slasher flick would be treated and and that's far far more interesting i think um of a road to go down and i think they just missed a huge opportunity to make a good slasher flick that that people want to watch because people do like slasher flicks and then and and that's where you sneak your message in you don't make it this this overt over the top i'm going to hit you with the head like all trans kids should be safe like no no make it dangerous for them and 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 have your message mixed in there so people actually want to watch it and actually and actually hear your message and i think they missed on that and even when you review read reviews online like there are people who who identify as as the people in this camp would and they were kind of offended by how how snowflake they were they were treated or the characters were were handled and and, and written as um and even had like kevin bacon as as the camp, head camp counselor in it and things like that like i don't know it was just I think you had the opportunity to do something good, and I, th- I think they entirely dropped the ball. I was very disappointed in that movie. I, th- I think it. I think it needs to be remade and redone. Interesting. Yeah, you know, this is the first I'm hearing of it, so I don't have much talent. No, and that, uh, and that's the whole thing. Because if it was uh, good, people probably would have been talking about it, but it wasn't. Sure, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that is a problem though. Is they try to paint it so much that people who they're painting to are like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. Yeah, like like I, I watched this to 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 get a slasher flick, and yeah, it was it was disappointing, uh, to to say the least. I I, I really don't recommend it. Um, the kills aren't even violent. I mean, the movie could have been PG thirteen. I mean, it was just really it, it was really uninteresting and 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 not well done. My number three is uh, Rocky. Uh, so I want an actual Rocky remake, not a reboot, not a spinoff like Creed is. I want a new uh, fighter, and I my idea would be for it to be a uh, MMA version of Rocky as opposed to boxing. Okay. Um, you could, you know, you could have the same kind of style. Like he's kind of just like a brawler. He's not as um, he's not as technical, but he's a tough guy. You know, you can do all that stuff. Um, you're gonna you're gonna have to have a little less of that because you can't really be a brawler and do good with like chokes and arm bars and all that. <laughs> yeah, I uh, like doesn't really work if you just do. They'll they'll just take they'll just take your arm off. Right. Um, doesn't really matter if you have a tough chin. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's really not even much to that. It can really, just take Rocky, 
new character and make it uh, MMA thing, and you can you can have five, six, seven movies off that. Yeah, and and half of which are good. Um, Only oh, yeah. half. And honestly, if if they started it now, we might still be able to get to number four and do it do it against the do it against Putin Putin and the Russians. Yeah, but, I mean that's a that's an interesting take because I always kind of pictured um, Creed as the remake in in a certain way with with Rocky kind of being that Burgess Meredith character. So kind of is, but because of the way the story works, it's really just the next the, the next in line because like he is a Paul Creed son, Rocky is showing him the ropes. So I mean it's it's just it's really just the next film in the series. Okay. It's, to me, so you're wanting you're, you're, you're want another person starting from from zero, and that, right. and that underdog the underdog story. Right, right. Like Lee, I mean, again, just just like with Terminator, I can't see a scenario in which Rock in which Sylvester doesn't at least make, make a cameo, but leave him out as much as possible. Right. Okay. It could either be just some guy in the gym for like two minutes. Like, hey, there's a little in there. Or have him ringside. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, it's as, yeah, as, as like Sylvester Stallone. Like yeah. Yeah, do like a Stan Lee style cameo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's your number three? So mine is a movie from 1951 called Ace in the Hole. So this is a okay. Michael Douglas film. Really, really good film. He is kind of a, a cutthroat journalist. And um, I th- he, he's looking for a story, and he happens upon this incident where a man is trapped in a cave-in in um, the desert in, in California. And he turns it into this giant media circus and keeps on kind of milking off of it and, and, and milking this story, this new story off of it. And um, ultimately, the, you know, the guy that he's – the guy that's trapped – could have been saved at any moment and he keeps on like coming up with excuses why this guy can't be saved and the guy ultimately dies and michael douglas kind of goes insane and realizes like what what he's done um but i i think i think this is a type of movie that uh, given given today's current political climate and today's uh people's view on media both both the 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 mass media, the mainstream media, and the independent media. I think he could do something really interesting and make an interesting commentary on on where our media is kind of kind of gone. Um, you know, you don't have to necessarily you could you could pick a scenario like this: somebody trapped in a cave. You don't have to make it a political thing to still make a commentary on on media as a whole and and what it's become. Um, so, so I, I, I think something like this would be is is probably kind of needed. Um, we would need a light, deft touch to to really do it well and to make sure and to kind of have everybody, you know, people don't scream ah it's it's woke ah you should get canceled you know you you, you would have to find you would have to find a really a really interesting balance to to, to get your message across. But I, th- I think it could be done. I think it could be really interesting and well. You know, well received. Right. Well, the issue is, is that um, even if you found that balance, they would just see the parts that they don't like. And oh, call it, you know, they, 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 they would just focus on that entirely. Oh no, they would they would see that in the trailer, and they would call it as oh, soon yeah. as the trailer came out. Yeah, no, no, because that's all people do anymore is they they argue about trailers. They don't even watch the movie. Yeah, no, and and that would be my concern. But I think uh, I, I think a, I think a movie like this could be could be really important, really relevant. Um, so yeah, I would watch it. I would definitely watch it, and I, I definitely agree with you. All righty, my number two is a uh, rape uh, rape redemption. I would love a uh, American version of this film. Um, have it in Los, you can have that in like Los Angeles or New York or wherever. You can have the whole thing just an American version of it. I think it would be incredible. So um, I'm going to say two things. One, we already have that. It's called Dread. <laughs> two, two, no, we don't need that because Americans 
do not know how to edit and choreograph those kind of action sequences. And I know you're going to point to John Wick. I know you're going to bring that up, but generally (laughs) speaking, they don't, they don't take the time to do that, to do that choreography. Um, The stunt men don't have the, don't have the, the passion to actually take the beating and the bruises, the way a lot of the, the stuntmen do in those countries, um, and 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 maybe it's not a good thing that they they you know, they'll 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 get a concussion for twenty bucks of, of, for a day of work or something like that. Maybe that's not a good thing, but it creates good sentiment. <laughs> and and I'm a, I'm okay reading subtitles for that good of a movie. So I'm yeah, gonna I, I'm gonna hard I, disagree yeah, with you on that one. Uh, that's yeah, that's I fine. have to. Okay, that's fine. I don't want I just. The idea of seeing, like, I'm thinking, like, expendables, but actually serious. If that makes okay. Sense. Like, a bunch of just famous action stars, but actually taking it seriously. Not just some steroid abuse nightmare that expendables <laughs> <laughs> But, I don't know. I mean, and I'm aware that it would not be done well. I'm aware that, like, the core of your would be close to as good, um, even though they could just do what uh, Old Boy failed to do and just go to the source and say, "Hey, please help us." Right. Um, we know Gareth Gareth Evans, I think, is the director. So he's he's an actual. Um, he's, I, I think the director is either English or American of the Raid Redemption. Well, there you go. Yeah. So just have him so, yeah. make it. Yeah. I'm okay with that. <laughs> just make sure they. Uh, Dave Dave Batista's in it for some reason. Not okay. like not like a main character, but he can be one of the one of the guys that they gotta take out. He could be the dog at the end that the two guys have to fight together. There you go. I like that. Yeah. Kind of do a do a twist on on the fact that the dog in Raid Redemption is is a tiny guy, and Dave Batista yeah. is a is a giant monster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what's your number two? My number two is um, another movie from the 50s. It's called High Noon. It has uh, Gary Cooper and Grace Kelly, and they've recently gotten married. Gary Cooper is a sheriff of the town, and he finds out that um, a guy that he has um, recently arrested, it, the, the gang's coming back in town and freed him, and they're out for revenge and they're coming into town to kill him and everybody's telling him to take your wife get out of town go on your honeymoon get get away from this mess before these guys come in here to kill you and he stands his ground and is very resolute and it's uh the the final act of this movie um even for 50s movies just a great excellent just western shootout um and i know a lot of people would probably say like this is a classic movie and probably shouldn't be touched, but I, I think I think it could. I think it's been long enough. I think it's time for kind of a modern retelling, a modern touch, um, especially in terms of editing and cinematography and action and just the way we do things. Because um, it's really an excellent story about you know standing your ground and fighting for what's right, even even if it means sacrificing the things you love. Um, mm-hmm. And that that just feels like a very very American tale, so I think that would be a that'd be a, that'd be an excellent movie to to remake. I like that. That has kind of a No Country for Old Men kind of vibe to it in a way. Yeah, to an extent. Yeah, yeah, I can see that <laughs> with some fairly minor, fairly major major differences, but same concept of the way. But yeah, it's it's hey, very similar. Did you watch the remake of Three Ten to Yuma? Yeah. With uh, Chris, I think Christian Bell was in it, wasn't he? And and and, sure. and, yeah. and Russell Crowe. Yeah. It's very very similar along the. I'm I'm thinking of something along those lines. And I mean James Mangold did that. You know he did he did Logan and uh, what is he doing? He's doing a big he, oh uh, the new Indiana Jones movie that's just come, about to come out. I think he did that. Um, so yeah, I mean he he's got he's got chops in westerns. I'd love to see him. You know, he, he could do it or, you know, there's plenty of other directors out there. I don't really have, that. Don't really have anybody anybody in mind. But, I mean, obviously Grace Kelly was uh, was the um, 
was the wife in it. So you need someone kind of beautiful and timeless like that as the, as the female lead. But yeah. Sure. Definitely. I like that. That's awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll check that one out. My number one is one, uh, one flew over the uh, cuckoo's nest. Um, I think, this, the main reason I love this movie we made is because I think it did a good job um, discussing mental health and the kind of like stigmatizations to an extent. I, I mean, really for its time, it actually did a great job, I guess, but I think it's frankly long overdue that there's a movie that does that again. And I think if you just kind of remade that and just kind of expanded upon it, like really, really like humanize the people going through it because it's kind of shocking to me the amount of people who to this day see people who struggle with mental health as you know freaks and lunatics and not realize that it's just people who are literally literally working right next to you um i would love to see a more modern make on that and just kind of give them a more realistic look at it um Maybe leave out the last scene because that was a wonderful scene, and I don't want to see that one done again and done wrong. And right. frankly, I don't, I don't want to see it again because it was a hard scene to watch. <laughs> yeah, no. And of course, I don't think I don't think they even do that anymore. Lobotomies, that is. Oh, you're talking about the lobotomy. Okay. I'm like, I, I, I was I was I was thinking about I was thinking about the suffocation and the. Well, I mean that like, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, of goes, goes in the okay. yeah. So um, what yeah, how I, about how about just an origin story of nurse nurse ratchet? Would that be enough? I'd watch that. Okay, it's on Netflix. So Is it really? Yeah, it's bad. But yeah, it's on oh, Netflix. Wow. I think Ratchet or something like that. I I don't know. It's I'd, I'll look it up and let you know, but there is a there is a series that was the origin story of Nurse Ratchet on Netflix. I feel like it came out during the pandemic, if I'm not mistaken. But it's yeah, just like a couple years. Ago. Yeah, because she's like she's not quite evil, but her actions can be interpreted as such. I guess if that's if what I'm saying makes sense. Yeah, she's definitely an old school thought. In, in the mental yeah. institution where where she feels like these people can 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 change and make their own choices in a lot of ways you know in that movie Jack Nicholson is the antagonist to her like he's he's really yeah. kind of pushing her buttons and, and and pushing her too far um, yeah well and, yeah. and she basically sees them as just problems that need to be dealt with not people right oh 100 percent yes. Like, which I think that's, I would, which I think is a good start, but I think they just need to do a better job of showing that they are, in fact, people. Um, yeah, because cause they were, they were kind of caricatures in, they were. in that movie. Yeah. They were. Which, and again, given the time, it's, I'm not, I'm not like making like a strong critique. I mean, it, it, it's still a great movie. Yeah. Um, I just think that it would be a real service to society to, make a more modern version of that. Yeah. yeah. No, I could see that. Yeah. You can even have like the next nurse, nurse ratchet be Jack Nicholson. Although I guess actually no he's he's not I think he's well. retired. Yeah. I think he's beyond retired. I think he's dead. I Just know. being propped he's up at, dead. Al, at at Lakers games. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but yeah, that's my that's my number one. What about you? So my number one is Moonraker, the James Bond movie. Nice. Um, so like Moonraker that. is my favorite James Bond book. It's a really, really great book. Um, is it your I favorite would, James Bond movie? No. No, it's one of my least favorite James Bond movies. There, there are yeah. aspects to it that I really like, but it, the, the, the book is so much different than the movie because the movie – the movie is trying to, um, you know, it's it's trying to cash grab on Star Wars, you know, 
it's because I think it came out in 78 or 79 and Star Wars is 77. Um, so it's 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 trying to get in on that and it completely ignores a lot of what's in the book. And in fact, some of what's in the book was also used in um, Die Another Day, which is my actual least favorite uh, James Bond movie. Um but but the book is is a really really great um, spy thriller. I think if I think if they were to do this right, I think they need to do a period piece. I don't think you can. I don't think it needs a modern retelling. I think that would kind of ruin it. I think it should be set in post World War II, Cold War, um, and and really like examine that. You know. I think people would love it because hey, Russia's the bad guy, and that's and that and people love to make Russia the bad guy again nowadays. So I think you could you could really get away with that and have a lot of fun. Um, but um, it's a it's a really great spy. It's slow burn. Um, it's for the time. It was even a little sci-fi. I think you could have fun with that and do do kind of retro technology and stuff like that. So. You know, because I, I, I think it was a – I think the book came out around the time that Sputnik. So I don't think there was a really big understanding in general on satellites and rockets and things like that. Like that wasn't really common knowledge. So it's it's a lot of fun in regards to that. And it's, 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 a, it's a little bit um, grandiose in its idea of those things. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, – I would, I would really love uh, – uh, a, a book or a, a movie based on that set in the time period that the book is fairly accurate to the book. Um, and uh, I really want, um, well, I really, if you did a period piece, you couldn't have Idris Elba as, as, as Bond. I mean, I, I don't think that would really work. So I would want, um, is it Tom Hiddleston? Is that the guy that played Loki? I don't know. I'd really want him him to be Bond because because Bond is supposed to be kind of lanky and thin um, and I think he, he's not this like rip muscle guy like um, like Daniel Craig so I think I think someone like like Tom Hiddleston like he's definitely a very fit guy but he's not he's not a bulky guy and I, th I think he right. would, I think he would do a great job as, as well, the character they always make him bulky because they're trying to just like appeal to the uh, American crowd oh yeah yeah Tom Hiddleston is an interesting pick. I would have never thought of that, but I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't complain. Um, but I'm with you though. Like if uh, Idris Elba could be Bond, that's who. That's who I wanted to be. Yeah. But uh, it sounds like we're not going to get that. It sounds like he doesn't even want to do it. Yeah, I read something recently where he got turned off on the project because of racists. Basically, like people. Who, people making very racist comments to him about him about him being potentially James Bond and he was just like I don't yeah. even want to deal with that and I really that to me is probably the worst thing racism has ever done um, say what you will about about slavery but it's Idris Elba not as Bond is to me the, the this is the end of our video nobody's ever going to watch this far so I'm not really worried about this so. <laughs> we've just been canceled by both sides wonderful Oh my god! Yeah. Uh, so, but no, I, I mean, I like, I, I don't blame him one bit. I mean, I, I can only imagine the crap he heard. Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, and yeah, Britain, Britain has their share, fair share of racists. So yeah. Well, and the ones that we have, pretty loud, so they probably still heard. It. Yeah. No, we have, we have top-notch racists. A lot of the British racists came over here and really, really cultivated racism. Like just on an expert level in America, so yeah, we're we're kind of unique. That's what they're talking about whenever they want to stop like uh, immigrants coming over. Is that what they mean when they say that? No, not at all. No, I don't think so. Ah, what stop stop the racist from from Britain? No. Yeah, we need to stop them until we figure out what's going on. Some of them, I'm, I'm sure, are good people. I'm sure. Some of the racists are very good people. I've heard, but yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Other than being complete racist, yes. Besides that, I'm sure they've got great work ethic. They'll be wonderful <laughs> and they got Yes, they are willing to do the work that all the migrants are coming in and doing. 
Well, I mean, actually, no, they, they aren't at all. They just want to drink beer. That's not woke. What am I saying? Never mind. Well, I mean, given how, given if they're, if they're that racist, they're probably not going to be able to work in the world anyway. So. <laughs> no. So that was our list. If you made it this far and haven't already reported our video to YouTube, um, we appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, let us know what uh, if if you agree or disagree. If you have any bad opinions about movies being remade, like Andrews for Raid Redemption, yeah, just uh, let us know. Uh, for that, I want I want John Cena to be the main the, the main uh, cop in that movie. <laughs> what in Raid Redemption? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we we need we need a rematch of him versus Batista. <laughs> Is that the scene? The scene he, he doesn't actually like, get behind the wall. He just stands in front of the wall, and you can't see me. Is that? Right. Is that what he, like, Damn it. Right. And he's so, stabbing so, the machete all around. I can't find this guy. Where is he? Okay. I, I actually would die laughing if they did that. <laughs> <laughs> the the entire final match would just be like wrestling <laughs> moves. It won't be any real fighting. Uh, <sighs> Yeah, but yeah, thanks for not canceling us. Yeah, okay. or if you or if you did, I guess the world banks you. I did. I did. <laughs> we'll we'll make an apology video with with our uh, ukulele on our next video. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube apologies are the best. <laughs> All right. Well, we uh, thank you guys if you watch this far. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it, and uh, see you next time when our – I don't even have that up, do I? I don't have it up. I know, I know we're doing um, A Few Good Men. Okay. Uh, we're doing Max Steel Republic. I don't know what our top five is, but I think we all keep that a secret. Anyway, so. Yeah, we do. Yeah, because we, we change it up at the last minute a lot of times. So, all right. Okay. Wait a minute. Is it that or is it The Hunt? I think The Hunt is next. Or you're, the you're next. next pick for me. Yeah, yeah, my next. Okay. All right. So it's a few good men. Then it should be singing in the rain, and then it's going to be the hunt. That should be our order. Okay. We might change it up. Who knows? You'll you'll find whatever you find here. So. That's right. If, if, if there is no, uh, there's no. We don't even know which which number we're on. So we'll do what we want. Yeah. I'm going to stop numbering them. We're just whatever. This is another episode. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you next time. Bye, guys. Holly was a warm girl.